wasn't going to be part of my uh, presentation tonight, but since one of the gentlemen raised the issue of me assaulting Tom Kiefer, <laughs> I was arrested last Thursday, leaving the courthouse, because Tom Kiefer and his group of radicals had sworn the private property where we were holding a meeting. Of course, the OPP didn't do what you saw done tonight. They actually were nowhere to be found. They refused even to show up to help us. So as I ordered Tom Kiefer off the property, and he refused to leave, I naturally touched him and guided him towards the edge of the property. Instead of the OPP arresting the illegal trespassers, I'm the one facing the criminal charge even though I had the legal right to use the property. That's Caledonia. What you've heard so far is a willful failure of the OPP to uphold the, the law and to honor the Charter of Rights and Freedom. <coughs> it would be bad enough if the OPP just stood by and watched the innocent residents be attacked and hospitalized, but it gets far worse. When Julian Fantino, now conservative MP for Vaughan, became the OPP commissioner in October 2006, the OPP started a campaign of targeting non-natives who spoke out. Fantino used the full force of his office as commissioner, both legally and illegally, to target certain law-abiding citizens. He lied to the media, he lied to the public, he lied to his officers, and he lied under oath in court. He engaged in criminal behavior, all with the repeated public support of Dalton McGinty. Yeah. Mr. Fantino and other senior OPP officers misguided the, misled the public about the criminal behavior of Native protesters, covered for them by interfering in, in police investigations, and by supporting a cop assaulter in court. The OPP engaged in behavior to intimidate, to threaten, to harass both the elected officials and the public, and they encouraged officers to abuse the court system for motives other than to get a conviction. The OPP and the Crown Office in Fuga united to use the criminal court system to target innocent non-natives, as well as covering for and protecting OPP officers who engaged in criminal behavior. The evidence of the OPP corruption is overwhelming, and here is just a drop in the bucket of that evidence. The idea that individual officers have some sort of discretionary authority to arrest or to intervene to stop criminal behavior done by natives is completely demonstrated to be false when you watch the following video. OPP Officer Sergeant Dan Michaud was in charge in Cuba a town 15 minutes from Caledonia, where the property owner demanded that the OPP remove native protesters from his development. As always, the OPP refused, and Officer Michelle explains why. According to the Crown Attorney, there, there is no Mr. being admitted here yet. Yet? What does it take to be admitted? Uh, then, then I have to know who owns the land. <laughs> <laughs> and who do you think owns the land? I have no idea. You do? No, I do, I do not. Because it's under dispute. Like it would be for anybody, like your property in Binbrook. If, you're, if you want to fight about the property line, I wouldn't be able to say, walk up to you and say, yeah, you can put a fence there, you can put a fence there. I couldn't do that. Yeah, but if someone walked on my property, if so, and, and, someone and it, walked on my property, just a second. It was you distinguishable. Asked, you, it was your, it was yeah. your scenario. Yeah. Someone walked on my property and told me I can't walk into my house that I've been living in for a couple of years. Yeah. You'd be right there to remove them. And it's distinguishable as to whose property it is? Well, and what, and, and it, I, can, I can prove that? Yes, you're absolutely right. Well, that's just the... Uh, Talk. I mean, the Attorney General argued that the natives do not have a second. The Attorney General argued in 2006 right. at the Ipawash Inquiry, they gave over 25 court examples where natives do not have color right to be blocking or occupying 
disputed lands. And when, you, and when, uh, when I get directions to that effect, then oh, I, I will, I will take. I, will I understand take the, you're following orders. I will take the appropriate action. But you know as well as everybody else here who owns the property. I know I don't. Oh sure. I wish I did. Oh please. <laughs> well, who owns the? Who has the title deed? Which is backed by the Ontario government. So if if they produce the title deed, would that be sufficient? Yeah. So title deed mean nothing to the OPP. I'm just asking. Uh, Someone produced the speak, title I deed. Don't, I don't speak on behalf of of the OPP on all issues in land disputes. Well, you're you're a site supervisor here. Right. So if someone produced a title deed to you. That's not sufficient proof that they own the land. Not for disputed property. No. The judges keep saying right. that if the natives have a dispute, they take it to court. That's what judges keep saying. Yeah. And you're asking me to resolve that dispute here at this property, and I'm not going to. No, I'm asking you to live up to the legal documents that the Ontario government accepts. That's not what you're asking. You're asking, who pays me, the you're property? asking, you're asking me to pick sides. Who? No, no. Yes, no, you no. are. Who, who pays the property tax? No. So if they've showed you a property tax deed. Let's stop. No, no, these we're, are legal documents. These are, not, this is, this is the government saying this is who is the legal owner. Mr. McHale, right. I'm going to tell you right now okay. that it's, it's a disputed piece of property right. and I'm not going to make a bad decision. I'm not. Oh, I understand that. Okay. But there are legal deeds. There's a property I'm, tax that someone's paying. I'm sure There's there is. an Ontario title deed. I'm sure there is. Okay. And so if someone produced all these legal documents, that's not sufficient for you as an officer to decide who owns the land. But would it still be less disputed? Well, it's because this guy here decides to dispute with his neighbor doesn't mean he doesn't get to live in his house. That's the point you're missing. This guy can have a dispute with him. He takes it to court. What he doesn't do is go and occupy the other person's house. There are no court rulings that support what you guys are doing. You know what? Then that's something I'll have to live with. Commissioner Fantino was uh, played that video in court. I had him on the stand for two and a half days. He had to answer my questions. <laughs> And he could not specify any document by which any person could use to show that the OPP, who is the legal title owner of property. So the OPP has rejected all legal documents as who is the property owner. And not only that, because they don't know who is the legal property owner, they actually threaten to arrest the legal property owners <laughs> instead of the occupiers. The courts have already strongly rebuked this re approach that the OPP has and it has rebuked the McGinty government. In one ruling regarding that very property that you saw the video on, the Superior Court judge said the same government that advises the plaintiffs not to pay extra government development fees, refuses to enforce its property rights, and threatens to arrest its agents if they try to enforce their rights on their own. The court went on to say, the OPP, or the police, have the right to use their discretion in enforcing the enforcement of the law and private property rights. A blanket refusal to assist a property owner or a class of property owner, however, would be abuse of that right. This is the strongest wording as well. The police have no right to prevent a plaintiff from acting within their rights under Section 41 of the Criminal Code. Their warning to the plaintiffs that, uh, that they would be arrest, they would arrest anyone who is involved in a physical confrontation, regardless of the circumstance, is an abuse of power confirmed on them by Section 31 of the Criminal Code. Let's be clear what the court is saying. Everybody in Canada has the right under Section 41 of the Criminal Code to remove trespassers from property. Not only are OPP officers refusing to help property owners, which the court states is an abuse of their authority, but the OPP officers are threatening the property owners that they will be the one arrested, as I was last Thursday, if they exercise their authority under Section 41 of the Criminal Code. The OPP have trained their officers to violate the law by refusing to assist property owners and also by having officers threaten the legal owners instead of the illegal occupation occupiers. In Hagerville in 2008, another town about 10 minutes from Caledonia, a few native protesters showed up one day to shut down a development. We videotaped two OPP officers helping these protesters 
build the barricade to stop the legal owner from using his own property. Oh Jeff Parkinson, a Candace, a Candace founder and cameraman, filed a criminal charges privately against these two officers. The Crown immediately stepped in and did everything they could to discredit Jeff while caring nothing about the fact that the OPP willfully aided Native protesters in a criminal act. The Justice of Peace filed for the Crown's BS and refused to issue the charge. Jeff filed what's called a mandamus application in the Superior Court to force the criminal charge against these two officers. Again, the Crown did everything they could to discredit Jeff during the application. However, on January 12, 2009, Jeff Parkinson of Canace became the first person in the history of Canada to be successful at a mandamus order to issue a criminal charge. Judge Marshall ordered both officers to face a mischief charge for, for aiding in the barricade. Yeah. Yeah. Not surprisingly, the Crown immediately stepped in and stayed the charge. In the summer of 2008, I filed criminal charges against Com uh, Commissioner Fantino, Inspector Dave McLean, and Cabinet Minister Monty Quinter, who was the minister overseeing the OPP, with common nuisance for their failure to protect the public, which resulted in San Galtieri being seriously beaten by Native protesters. The Crown immediately stepped in and stayed the information before I presented any evidence in court. I filed a mandamus application, and Judge Marshall on July 2nd, 2009, ruled that the Crown had exceeded their jurisdiction and ordered a new proceeding to hear the evidence against Fantino, McLean, and Quinton. Judge Marshall stated, the power of a private prosecutor is undoubtedly right and necessary in that it enables the citizen to bring even the police or government officials before the criminal court when the government itself is unwilling to make the first step. In my view, the right to set out before an independent judicial officer allegations such as these is not fruitless formality. Indeed, it seems to me as a bulwark of democracy. The Crown wasn't happy, so they appealed that ruling to Ontario's highest court and on May 14, 2010, that court ruled against the Attorney General and ruled in my favor. Two weeks from today, on April the 8th, I am to present the evidence in court before a Superior Court judge against Fantino, McLean, and Quinter for a failure to protect this man. On a diff different issue, Fantino took steps to target non-natives natives, to ensure they did not speak out against the OPP or against McGinty. In one case, Fantino was enraged that Caledonia resident Dave Hartless, who is a Hamilton police officer, publicly called McGinty a coward and criticized the illegal behavior of the OPP. Fantino contacted the Hamilton police chief about Hartless and stated, Following. Bad enough that he slammed the men and women of the OPP. He refers to the premier as a coward on several occasions, and then he sc scatters his venomous email far and wide. If this isn't conduct unbecoming, I don't know what is. <laughs> Under oath, Fantino stated he never filed a complaint against Hartless, but merely was passing on information to the Hamilton police chief. However, on February 19, 2007, Hamilton Deputy Chief of Police sent Hartless an email that states, I have now received an official complaint of discreditable conduct from the Commissioner of the OPP concerning your email dated February 17, 2007. I order you to cease and desist sending any further emails concerning the situation in Caledonia. However, Dave Hartless wasn't going to roll over and play dead for Fantino. <laughs> So the deputy chief had to send a second email that stated the following. I understand that you have brought an application to the Superior Court of Justice to have my order declared unlawful. I hereby rescind my order of February 19, 2007. 